Hello and welcome to my new video on the zeta function. In this video I will try to show you a derivation of all the even values of the zeta function. So if you plug in uh, z to z, uh, zeta of 2, zeta of 4 and so forth, how to find the full closed formula for that. And um, this derivation goes back to Euler I think and what Euler did was he started off with the cotangent function and you will see why okay so instead of if you remember the steps with which we started in the case for s equals 2 so for all the reciprocal uh, values of square numbers and sum them up we ended having pi square over 6 and we used this cool function sine pi s over pi s which is equal to this uh, product and we can write it shorthand sine pi s over pi s equals this infinite product 1 minus s squared over k squared now we plug in k1 you get the first part k2 the second k3 and so forth and infinitely long now what Euler did was he took the logarithm of that okay and if, if taking the logarithm of something um, you can do something to it because uh, the logarithm will turn this product into a sum. Okay, this was the main idea. And now he did another trick. He just took this logarithm of sine pi s, wrote it here, and because this is in the denominator of the logarithm argument, uh, actually you can rewrite this as logarithm of sine pi s minus the logarithm of pi s. And this minus logarithm of pi s was brought to the right hand side, and here in we are switching this logarithm here in and then we don't have an infinite product but an infinite sum this is just the logarithm rule now what Euler did was he just differentiated that body and if you differentiate the logarithm of sine pi s do you know what you get you get pi multiplied with cotangent pi s okay and on the right hand side we will get something interesting too so let's just do it if we differentiate it, we have to use the chain rule. We have logarithm of something, so it's 1 over this something, which is sine pi s, multiplied with the chain rule, which, uh, which just gives us sine pi s. Uh, we, if you differentiate that, we get cosine pi s multiplied with pi. Okay. On the right-hand side, this logarithm of pi s will give you 1 over pi s multiplied with pi, so the pi just cancels. And here on this side, uh, we just have this body in the denominator, and then we differentiate this body in respect to d, uh, d uh, sorry, s, <laughs> just confused a little bit. And if you differentiate this in respect to s, you, this will become 0 minus 2s over k squared. So this is this. Now what he did then was he just multiplied this body out with s, so he got this much nicer expression because cosine is pi of s, over sinus of pi of s will just give you cotangent of pi of s okay so pi of s multiplied with the cotangent of pi of s is equal to 1 because we multiplied with s plus this body here with this minus sign and 2s squared k squared and so forth now I will do another thing I will multiply this k in 2 here so I have k squared minus s squared use this minus sign to change their order so we have sin s squared minus k squared take this s squared in front of this in, in sum so we have this kind of representation and one can use this to find another expression if you divide the whole equation again with s okay then you get pi cotangent of pi s is equal to 1 over s this is this body and here you end up having 2s okay and now there is a little change coming so 2s and this uh, these factors but if you look at these uh, two terms that I wrote down if you just um, bring in a common denominator so you have s plus k plus s minus k so you end up having 2s and if you take the 2s out uh, we have the same as we would have by dividing with s so <coughs> sorry so both these representations are the same we just divided this by s now if you look at it what we have here is we have hyperbolic functions so to say we have 1 over s 
Okay, and we have one over s with um, with a uh, hole at all positive numbers and all negative numbers. So actually, we could rewrite it in one version as a sum from k from min minus infinity to infinity, one over s plus k. So uh, if we let just uh, k start by on minus three, then then you have one over s minus three plus one over s minus two plus 1 over s minus 1 plus 1 over s, this is this body, and then you have the other terms which are these, I think, no, these, the right hand side terms, and then you plug in the positive k values and you get the cotangent partial fraction version, okay, so pi cotangent pi s, okay, now, but my intention doesn't go here, I just wanted to show you that we go here, okay, to this formula. Now, I've rewritten it. Now, you might be a lot of, con there might be a lot of confusion, but I go back. If you look at this body here, this can be rewritten as an infinite sum. And if you mm, know that k will become infinitely large, then one can find a geometric sum to that, which is, uh, for which this is just our x. So we have 1 over minus uh, we have 1 over 1 minus x, okay? And if you take the infinite geometric sum to that, I have a video on the geometric sum, so if you don't understand what I'm talking about, please watch that video. Uh, what we are doing here is we are writing in this way because our x is this s square over k square and for n, okay? Actually, uh, if I go back, I will explain it this way. If you have 1 over 1 minus x, this can be written as 1 plus x plus x squared, plus x cubed, and so forth. And this is what Euler did. He rewrote this as a geometric sum. Now, he could do a lot of stuff to that. Now we have two sums. What he did was, okay, just put all the things together. He took this minus 2, wrote it in front, took this s squared and this s squared to the nth power and combined them to n plus 1. And here k, um, is also uh, k squared is also to the n plus one power. Okay, now you can do something, which is very important. Instead of starting at zero, one could say, okay, let's start at n equals one. Why? Because this is, um, if you plug in zero, we start at one. So instead of starting at um, zero, we start at one, go to infinity, and reduce this n by one. So we have a much better formula. We have this body here, we have this sum didn't change, this sum uh, starts at 1, goes to infinity, and we have 1 over k, 2n, because this 1 was uh, reduced, uh, multiplied with s to the n. Okay, now we can see something, I hope you can see that. This body, does this remind you of something, okay? If you like, pause a while and watch at it and maybe plug in some k values, for example, 1 over 1, 2n plus 1 over 2 over, not over, but to the 2n, and so forth. This is actually the zeta function for 2n. Ta -dum, ta -dum. Okay, sorry for that strange sound. But what we have found out is that the cotangent function seems to be somehow related to the zeta function for odd not odd values, but even values, we get pi s cotangent of pi s is equal to 1 minus this infinite sum zeta of 2n multiplied with s to the 2n, okay? And I hope that's a very cool thing. Okay, and this actually concludes our first part of the video. So we found out that the cotangent function is somehow related to the zeta function, okay? And we will use this uh, later on, but we will first try to find out the another representation of the cotangent function and then smack down all these maxi values for zeta of 2n, okay? That concludes my lecture. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and please subscribe, okay? So see you guys.